Fente. Did I do that right? Amen. Fente. And this is Adeye. Adia. They get the name, they make sure I don't know nothing. Adia. Go ahead and read the scripture. We'll read the scripture first before we go forth, and then we're going to dedicate this baby to Genesis 33, 5 and 6. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God has graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaids came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. Mark 10, 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of God verily I say unto you whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child he mm. shall not enter therein 
And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Psalms 103, 17 and 18. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto thy children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Psalms 128 and 3. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. And your children shall be your God. Your children will be like swords and arrows. Your children, they will be your protector. Some of you are a little bit older than my mom is, might be a little bit older. And your children, y'all get this, your children should be protectors. Your children, if you're a child now and a parent, you should be protected. You should be an arrow in the hands of your parents. That's, that's Bible. What we're going to do is, as we are talking about, dedication means to devote Give me a minute or two. You devote and you decided that you want to devote your child's life. She can't make that decision herself. Not at this time. But it's going to come a time that she's going to make that decision. And what she's going to remember, and you show her pictures, you show her the certificates, that this is the day that you were. You were dedicated to the Lord. Me and your mom decided to do this. Me and your dad decided to do this. And from that day on, you are. Yeah, you are. You are sweet looking. That's what I was like. That's something. We have family here to witness that. You're here to witness this. You're here to say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to absolutely take my time to, to, to go along with you. I'm going to help you in this. I know the old village saying it takes a village to raise a child, but it's going to take you. I don't want everybody in the village raising my child. Oh, I'm sorry. Too, too often we've had too many people in the, in the village raise children and they haven't raised them right. People that you brought here today, they are going to help you raise your baby. Amen? Amen. Amen? So who do I have as God parents? Amen. Mom and dad. So mom and dad, I ask you this question. Do you promise that you will raise your daughter? Her name is? Adia. You're going to raise Adia in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, that you will put her in a place where she'll learn, she'll absorb those things which are absolutely uh, prevalent for her, that are absolutely the best for her. You say that you're going to do that? Yes. Amen. I didn't conjure this up myself. They decided to do this. And with that, I will take her. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you did. That baby talking. Let him go ahead and prophesy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And what you're doing this, you've given me the authority to go ahead to uh, make sure that we uh, we carry this dedication out. Not for the godparent. Not for you. Do you promise? In her absence, and even if she does not even feeling well one day, that you will promise. Do not deviate from them raising this baby up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. You say, amen. I got two. We got a motion and we got a second. Amen. A dear, what we're going to do is, I'm going to push in other parents. This is your village. Hey, okay. She's pushing up. She's okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I just get two of you at a time? I just want you to, as you would, I'm going to start here, Mom. And, and y'all just hold and just pray. We're just going to pray. Just pray. Just pray. Just a prayer, prayer. That's between you. Yeah. Amen. God, I thank you. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is so. No disease, nothing can come against this child. Nothing by the, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. 
and every tongue that rise up against her, it shall be judged. We'll judge it and say it's not so, or it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I got, I got, I've done this a few times. I've done this a few times. The village will. That's mine. Yeah. It's going to take a minute or two. We got to. You get a last. <laughs> You just kiss me. You got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my auntie. Okay, look, auntie. All right. As you touch this child, as you you're praying, as you're speaking over this child, you're speaking blessings from your mouth. We have we have the authority from God to speak blessings. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you. I say, until yeah, these all these people handling me, yeah. Too often we forget our 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 heritage. We forget our our, our family lines. We don't talk about our family lines. We want her to know her family. This is her family. This is her family. I know I'm doing something different. Don't worry about it. Let me just roll with this. Let me, can I roll with this on it? This is the family. And as the priest of this house, I anoint this baby. Hallelujah. You love that? That's, that's a good shoulder in. Try mine this time. I have a few grandchildren myself, and I just talk. Another time when we dedicate and we the oil again once more. We don't baptize children because they have to make that decision themselves at a time when they are understand what it really means. But we can sure anoint. The anointing said the ability and the power of God rest upon this child. So I speak the ability of God. She has the ability of God. You say, hey, even at this age, yes. Even at this age. God didn't make a half a baby. He made a whole. So she is absolutely endowed with everything that God has said about her. So when she is 30, she already have her 30 in it. It just hasn't made the, the age yet. She's already there. So Father, we thank you. The Bible says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom. The kingdom act in that manner as a child. It's easy, it's, 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 it's ready to submit. So I thank, I thank you, Lord, that this child will submit to his parents and to the raising of this child. They won't be rebellious. I come against rebellion. I come against uh, the illegal activity. I come against um, that the ears will be stopped up to anything that the enemy might speak to them. I pray in Jesus' name that there be a shield and a guard over this child, that whatever is said, nuts, nothing, no disease, no, 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 nothing that will come. That our body will reject anything. And we thank you. So by, by the power invested in me, I present to you, Lord, her name is Adia Bryant to you, Lord. You see her. She's yours. And she honors you. That's you. Get that baby. Get anything you want. Tear it. It's, it's all right. And it is so. And it cannot be changed, cannot be altered. In Jesus' name. I present to you your baby who has been dedicated to the Lord. Raise her up. Make, be a good example to her. She, let her be a daddy's girl. <laughs> let them know. Show them your 38. No, don't do, don't do that. Just, just kidding. That was me. That's what I did. 
Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for Fente and Damon. I thank you for this man and this woman who sired this child and now she is on record as being a child of the Most High God. So I thank you for them. As you continue to bless them, Lord, provide for them. There will be nothing missing. There will be nothing lacking. There will be nothing broken. And everything that you prescribed will come to fruition. And we count it done in Jesus' name. It is so. Amen. Come on again, the hand type of praise. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, we're glad to have you all mercy seat here this morning. At this time, we're going to prepare for our offering. And after that, we're going to have the word of God. Amen. Good morning. This morning's scripture for offering comes from uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowd dropped in their money. Many rich people dropped in their Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor woman came and dropped in two, two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor woman has given more than any, uh, excuse me, more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, uh, poor as she is, has given everything she has to live on. Lord, we come to you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, I ask that you would just examine all of our hearts to allow us to be able to give to you freely without any reservation or anything like that at all. Thank you for making us as generous as we are. Continue to work on our generosity. Make us have that spirit of generosity through what we, whatever we go through. And give to you as well as we give to others. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand and follow the ushers from the back. As I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you've never left me alone. You forgave me, and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It's because of your mercy that we are not consumed because thy compassion fell not day anew every morning great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness yeah, yeah. I can never repay you Lord for what you've done for me how you lose my shackles and you set me free how you made a way out of no way Turn my darkness into day You've been my joy in the time of sorrow Hope for my tomorrow Peace in the time of storm Strength when I'm weak and worn I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me How you lose my shackles and you set me free How you made a way out of no way Turn my darkness into day You've been my joy in the time of sorrow Hope for my tomorrow, peace in the time of storm, strength when I'm weak and worn. You've been, you've been, Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. You've been faithful, you've been, you've been, Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Sometimes I didn't do what you wanted me to do. One thing we know that God is faithful. Yeah. Where we have not been faithful, God is always faithful. You can depend on him. He's going to come through for you. So the day we thank God for each and every one of you being here. Welcome to the mercy seat. This is the place where God meets man in his greatest need. This is the place where God tra trains man to be the place 
where he will meet you at your greatest need. This is the place where God said you can be a place of refuge. This is a safe place. You can come in, toe up from the floor up, and still God said, I'll take you in. This is the place where you can reconcile differences and concerns. Wherever you may have a difference, this is the place. I'm not talking about the building. The building is Christ. You and I are the building that God has built. And we are a place of, to reconcile. He's made us ministers of reconciliation. We are a place where restoration is taking place. Even today, we are all being restored. He said, I don't feel like I'm being restored. Stay here a little bit longer. Stay around me. I speak in tongues all day long. And we'll probably get a chance. That's all right. Remember that. We're so glad to have you with us today. And thank you for uh, choosing Mercy Seat to be your place of, of our worship today. And we thank God for each and every one of you. We bless you today in that. Today, we have a special treat from you. We have one of our daughters here that's going to break the bread of life. Uh, it's Miss Crystal Richardson. She is a minister of the gospel. She went through our school. I've known Crystal since we opened this building. In fact, before this, I've known Crystal for 22 years. And she's uh, been a, a faithful member of this flock. She's married to some guy by the name of Joseph, who's also somewhere around here doing some work. And think now he is. They have four beautiful children, and we thank God for them. She's going to break the bread of life. Will you please stand for the word, not for the person, just stand for the word of God. Minister Richardson. All right. So our first scripture is going to be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Very popular scripture. We do this one every first Sunday. So we will read this. Everybody got it? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. All right, and it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was portrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 25, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen, you can be seated. Our title today is called Drink From His Cup. Um, we're gonna talk about communion and the importance of communion. Um, so let's break this down so that we, the next time we remember God in that way, we'll have a deeper understanding of what he wants from us. All right, so commune. The Hebrew word debar, and its meaning is to speak, promise, or to pronounce. That is the first time we see the word commune in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. Um, and I'm instantly reminded of Exodus 25 and 22, um, where God tells Moses, Pastor actually just said it, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee, um, and commandment unto the children of Israel. So this word means to speak, to promise, or to pronounce. But I noticed, as I was trying to study this and search for this word elsewhere, I noticed that it was only in the Old Testament. That this meaning, debar, for communion, is only mentioned in the Old Testament. It's not mentioned in the New Testament. I noticed that in the New Testament, there's a new meaning of the word, which is koinonia, which is meaning fellowship, intimacy, to share in and to partake. And God is saying, I don't just want to meet with you and speak with you, but I want to fellowship with you. He wants you to know him and he wants to, you to be in him. All right, so back to our main scripture here. We're gonna talk about um, verse the first verse where Jesus takes the bread, verse 24 actually, where Jesus takes the bread and he says, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now for the longest of time, I'm just like, okay, yeah. His body was 
beaten and bruised for me. He gave his life for me. I get it. Like, he's the bread. Got it. Bread of life. That makes sense. But God said, go deeper. And so this is what I found as I was studying. It says, the bread represents his body that was sacrificed for us. In John chapter 1, verse 29, um, John sees Jesus, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now, this is key to this scripture because in the b- biblical times, they would sacrifice lambs and goats as sin and guilt offerings. And they would, the congregation would give those over to the priests, and the priests were allowed to eat of the sin and guilt offerings. Why? Because it was their job to take on the sin of the congregation upon themselves. And then they were to make atonement for the people. So here is Jesus, the high priest, sitting among the royal priesthood, the disciples, and he's saying, this is my body. Take, eat. I'm the lamb. Here is, I'm the sacrifice. Take and eat. (laughs) Take and eat. So he's saying to them, take and accept my sacrifice and fellowship or partake in my suffering. And we see that in Philippians when Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, being made like him unto his death. So this taking of the bread is so much deeper than just him being crucified. It is him being crucified, but he's calling you the priest. (laughs) He's saying you're the priesthood. He's wanting you to fellowship in his suffering. Hallelujah. Then when we go to verse 25 and it talks about the cup, this is my favorite part. All right. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now, in the Jewish tradition, the father finds the bride for the son. The son doesn't go find his own bride. The father finds a bride for the son. Sound familiar? God found us for the son. Then they meet with the bride and her family. And the father hands a cup to the son. It's a cup of wine. He hands it to the son. And this is um, where we find Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane where he asks God to remove this cup from me, if it is your will. The Father was giving him the cup. And Jesus is saying, if it can be removed, remove it. Because Jesus understood what he was going to have to go through. He understood that he was going to have to give up his life. He knew. He knew. And so this is the Father giving him the cup. So then after the Father hands the Son a cup of wine, the son hands the cup to the bride and says, I love you, and I offer my life. Will you marry me? (laughs) And Jesus is offering us his cup. He's offering us his cup. Hallelujah. Now the bride, if she chose to accept the proposal, she would drink it, and that would seal the engagement. And in that, she is saying, I accept your life, and I give you mine in return. So this is, this is why communion is so important. So Jesus took the cup, and he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Jesus is saying, I love you. I give you my life. Will you marry me? Every time we drink from the communion cup and hear the words, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. He is saying the same thing to us over and over again. I love you, Karina. 
I give you my life. Will you marry me? I love you, Brandon. I give you my life. Will you marry me? Will you be my spiritual bride? And every time we drink from that cup, we are saying, I accept your gift. And I give my life in return. All of this is important. And it's so important because Jesus is soon to return for his bride. I thought I was just studying communion, (laughs) y'all. I really did. And God says, okay, now you know all of that. But now let me tell you why I want you to know this. And it's because Jesus is soon to return for his bride. And his bride has to be fully committed to him. Fully committed because her drinking of that cup said that, hey, I'm giving you my life too. And so we have to do the same. God says to spend time with me. Prepare the way for my return. So keep going in this Jewish tradition. Once the engagement is sealed, the groom goes his separate way back to his home. The bride stays with her family, and they have an engagement period. And they prepare themselves spiritually for their marriage. And the groom prepares a house for the bride. This is called the period of setting the bar. This is what they called it. It's the period of setting the bar. And only after the father tells the son that the house is ready, does he go and get his bride. He doesn't just go, oh, I'm done. Let me go get her. No, he waits for his father to tell him that the house is ready and that it is time for him to go get his bride. In the same manner, God is the only one. Jesus doesn't know when it's time for him to come back here. He's waiting on God. He's waiting on his father to say, hey, it's time. It's time for you to go and bring the church back home. It's time. We don't know the hour, but he is soon to return. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. So what does it mean to prepare the way of the Lord? To make a straight path for him. We have to prepare for his return as the Jewish bride did in biblical times. So the first thing, one of the very first things she did in preparation for her wedding was she had to go into the mikvah. And that's like a pool. It could be a lake or a river, but it had to be natural flowing water. And she had to go into this pool. And the purpose was to purify her from her natural impurities. So the first thing we have to do is take a bath. That's the first thing we have to do. We have to be cleansed from our sin. And that starts with repentance. Y'all, I, I, sidebar, please come to prayer. Prayer is usually like a preview of every message that will be spoken (laughs) of how the service is going to go. Because Elder Trisha literally prayed this. And I was like, man, she's all in now. I don't think I'm going to need to preach because she's already prayed it. But it starts with repentance. And we have to be washed by the water of the word. We have to be washed by the water of the word. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. I want to give you a scripture for this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Jesus wants to sanctify us and cleanse us with the washing of of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, 
but that it should be holy and without blemish. So allow the word of God to wash you and transform you. Do away with the backbiting. Do away with the gossiping. Do away with the manipulating. Do away with the pride. Do away with the greed. Do away with the attention seeking. Do away with the lying. Do away with the deception. Throw away the crystals and the evil eye jewelry. Throw away the horoscopes and the digital fortune telling pro software because we know it's all over Facebook. Those things open doors to unclean spirits. Do away with it. Allow the word of God to wash you and transform you. And as you're seeking him in his word, he'll reveal to you the things that you need to do away with. He will wash you and cleanse you and purify you. We have to, be, we have to take a bath. Next, the bride also finds her perfect dress and all the things she needs to look her very best. I remember looking for my dress, and it was so exciting, and I cried, and that dress was just like perfect for me, and I wanted it, I desired that dress, and I got the dress, and I feel like I looked my best. And we have to do the same. We have to do the same thing. We have to desire to look our best for the groom. It's time to get ready. It's time to get ready. Um, the sense of urgency that I feel when I say these words, I can only equate it to um, when I was pregnant with my children. That urgency, like, you know, in the, in the beginning it's like, it's all, it's fun, you know? You're enjoying every moment. You're listening to the baby's heartbeat. You're trying to pick out baby names, wondering what the gender's gonna be. But then there comes a time, you, it's the third trimester, it comes where you feel this urgency to get things together. You start feeling like, okay, I need to do the nursery. I need to pack the diaper bag. I need to get the hospital bags ready. I need to wash the baby's clothes. I need to deep clean the house. I need to childproof everything. All the things, you just literally just, all of a sudden, that's all you can think about, so that's what you do. Your husband's like, what is going on? <laughs> that's called nesting. And as the mother carrying the baby, you feel this urgency to get everything ready. Why? Because the baby is coming soon. And that's the urgency I feel every time I say, Jesus is coming soon. We've heard it and we've heard it. No, but Jesus is coming soon. Sooner than you think, Jesus is coming soon. And we have to get ready. We have to get ready. What does that look like? What does getting ready look like? Let's go to Revelations chapter 19, verse 7 through 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to, hear, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. What does getting ready look like? It looks like righteousness. It looks like holiness. So adorn yourself in righteousness. Adorn yourself in righteousness. Colossians chapter three, verse 12 through 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. We can read this. Yeah, the pastor list. You are always and dearly loved by God. So robe yourself with virtues of God, since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. You have, you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful as you endeavor to understand others. You don't know people. Try to know them. Don't judge them. And be compassionate. Show kindness toward all, not some, 
but all. Your boss show kindness. Your coworkers show kindness. That family member show kindness. The people in this building that are sit, you sit next to show kindness. Be gentle and humble, unoffendable. Whoa. <laughs> unoffendable in your patience with others. This is righteousness. Y'all ready? We can do this. <laughs> We can tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith. Realize that people aren't where you are. Give them room to grow. Give them room to grow. Forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. For love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true purity. This is righteousness. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one. Not money. Peace. Not our emotions, but peace. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as part of his one body. And always be thankful. This is righteousness. Let the word of Christ live in you richly flooding you with all wisdom. Apply the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the Psalms and with festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the Spirit. So sing to God with all your hearts. This is still righteousness. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, and bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. This is righteousness. This is what we strive for. This is what we desire. This is what we desire. This is what our dress looks like. And until we look like that, until we look like that, we've got work to do. We can't get comfortable here. Jesus is coming, and we have to get ready. So, I've noticed, I was talking to Alexia Andrea the other day about this. I've noticed, we've noticed that, you know, on social media, she, told, she said it best, Christianity has become a trend. That's what we've noticed. Everybody's talking about Christianity. Everybody's got a word. Everybody wants to teach you how to do something that's involving Christ Jesus. And a lot of it is wrong. <laughs> and the motives are skewed. Because they're really just doing it for monetary gain. If they can get those views, if they can get those likes, then hey, they get sponsorships and they get money. And they have no relationship with Christ whatsoever. They're spectators of Christianity. They're looking in and telling everyone else about it, but they haven't experienced it for themselves. And some of us are like that. Some of us are the same way. We come to church. We watch. We can tell you what pastor said. We can tell you what Elder Trisha said. We can tell you what, how worship was. We can tell you what somebody else said. But if you ask me what God is saying to me, oh, I don't, I don't know. It 
have to experience it for yourself. I think about my girls. Um, they love gymnastics. They love themselves with Simone Biles. They will watch her all day. Say, all these videos of her, she's doing the same stuff, but all these videos, she, she, they love watching her. They can tell you about it. They can name some of the mood, the elements. They can, they can do that, but they can't show you. They try, but they cannot show you. <laughs> Why? Because they're not gymnasts. They haven't put in the work to learn the flips. They haven't learned how to walk on a beam. They haven't learned how to go on a vault. They didn't, they didn't learn all of that. The bars, they didn't, they didn't put in the work for that. They didn't. We can't say we love Jesus. We can't say that we're followers of Christ if we're not spending time with him. Because then we're drinking of his cup unworthily. If we're not reading his word to find out what he's saying to us instead of just trying to find something to share with others. We have to experience him for ourselves. So real quickly, I'm just gonna do this quick exercise. So just play along with me real quick. You're in your house, you're washing dishes, and you get a knock on your door. Go to the door, and you don't recognize the person standing at the door. You don't know who this person is. And they say, oh, hey, Sharon, I know you. I follow you on social media. I've liked all your posts. Oh, my friend's uncle, sister-in-law talks about you all the time. And you're like, I don't know who this person is. I'm coming to stay with you. I got all my stuff. I'm coming to stay with you. A stranger now. What's your response? Do you let them in? Why not? Why wouldn't you let them in? You don't know them. <laughs> the same thing can be said in Jesus' house. The same thing can be said I've watched all of the Instagram videos of pastor so-and-so. I know you, Jesus. My grandma, I watch my grandma pray every day. I know you. She would make us pray. We would read the Bible. She would read the Bible to us. She would tell us what God did. I know you, Jesus. Lady Gibson got up and she said that God did this for her. And I know you, Jesus. I grew up in church, I know you. And she's just like, I don't, I don't know you. And there's coming a time where we will stand in front of him and he doesn't wanna have to say that I didn't know you. You can't come into my house, I don't know you. This is God's heart. He loves you. And that's the reason why we get this message, because he doesn't want to have to say that I don't know you. He wants you to drink of his cup. We don't want to be like the wheat and the tares that grew up together. We don't want to be like those tares, find out that all of a sudden one day we just find out when we're standing before Jesus that we were the, we were the tares and not the wheat. We grew up in church, we grew up with the wheat, but then when it's harvest time, when Jesus comes back for his bride, and there's a separation between the wheat and the tares, the Bible says that he took, the man took, takes the wheat, he puts it in the storeroom. That's God's house. Then he takes the tares, he bundles them up, and he burns them. That's hell. 
That's, that's what we don't want. Jesus is coming soon. And he is begging us, don't just grow up in church. Don't just come to church. Don't just watch the videos. Don't just share the post, but be the church. Christ is coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his bride. And he wants us so desperately to drink of his cup, to commit to him. So to those who have given their life to Christ, we still have work to do. We still have work to do. And God is calling us to repentance. I'm not asking you to come up. The altar is always open, though. This is an individual thing where we, this has to sit with us. This had to sit with me. We have work to do. and We have to seek his face and search the scriptures and know it inside and out in our hearts. Hide his word in our hearts so that it can wash us and cleanse us. But then there's some in the room who are strangers to him and who have not drank of the cup. He's offering that to you today. He's offering you to be his bride. He says, I love you. I offer my life to you. I gave my life for you. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? And all you have to do is say yes. You are Lord. Come into my heart. I turn away from my sin and I accept you as Lord and Savior. Here is my life. Drink of his cup. Drink of his cup. If you choose to accept him today, you can come. God was bold enough to come down. He was just bold. Now I want to say bold enough. He was bold. He came down to the earth and he walked among us. And we have this opportunity right now to be bold, to come down and accept him as Lord. So God, I pray. I pray for the one, Jesus, the one that says, nah, he don't love me. Not me. God says, even you. Even you. There's nothing that you can do to separate me from your love. There's nothing that you can do to stop me from loving you. God, I pray for the one who hasn't drank from your cup yet, Lord, I pray, Father, that as they are toiling with this word in their heart, God, I pray, Jesus, God, that you will encounter them and that, God, that you will um, speak to them and meet with them, Father, and that they will come running to you, Jesus. I pray, Father, for this body of believers, under the sound of my voice, God, I pray that you will encourage them on today, Father. 
I pray, God, that you will shake us and wake us up, Father, so that we'll see that you are coming and that we have to get ready. God, we have a work to do. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for getting comfortable. Forgive us, oh God, for just worrying about our own selves, our own families. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, Jesus. We repent, God. And we turn to you. We accept your offering, God. And we give you our lives in return. We surrender to you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the cup. Thank you for offering it to us. And thank you for loving us so much that you brought us this word. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless all of these people in this room, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Powerful word. Powerful word. I've been... Uh, I don't go to many churches except this one. Uh, so I don't hear many messages. But what I hear coming out of this place is, is, the, is, is the word of God. Thank you. I um, haven't heard in a while speak, but this is the absolute message. We know that this week we are having um, um, uh, uh, all these different terms now, a, a celebration of life. Yeah, got it. Uh, for our... Uh, departed brother Taylor, he's going to be, we're going to do that this Saturday coming up and it's going to be at 11 o'clock, we're going to have it here we expect uh, a substantial amount of people to maybe fill this place, what I would like to ask the membership here today uh, is that you would, and tell the rest that if you don't, let's not bring three or four cars because our parking lot might not be able to um, um, facilitate that's a good word yeah, the number of folks that's coming in. And if you are coming, I would ask that the membership park in the back. I'll say that again. Membership, those of you that are part of this fellowship, uh, drive one car. And if you need a ride, uh, we'll find somebody to get you a ride. We want that parking lot to be full and have people that are coming for the first time, second time, whatever it may be, that they have a place to park. Okay? And the membership will park in the back. Be accommodating those of you that are, are here and don't know exactly, well, can I do anything? Ask one of these elders and they'll, uh, they'll be able to tell you if, if we need some more um, people to help in the parking lot. We have a small body of people, so we don't have assigned parking lot attendants. But if we can, at this time, put away our little titles, take off our little pastoral hats, and learn how to park cars again, it would be a good idea. Uh, we will have them, um, um, I think I set it up for a Zoom meeting probably on Thursday night so that we can just talk about things that we need to make sure we're doing. Things are, are moving, and, but we still want to make sure that we, um, this is our brother. He, he was, he was an uh, integral part of this, this fellowship, and we're going to represent. Amen? Any other announcements, anything that we have? The last Sunday of the month is next Sunday, 28th, the 28th. I'm at, we're having a church meeting. All members of this fellowship will be, uh, we're going to meet after service. We're going to, right after service, we're going to meet and we'll have a church uh, meeting. This is, um, we understand that this is an organism, but it's also an organization under the guise of the, the Florida statutes and the U.S. government statutes, and we're supposed to meet. So we're going to meet and we're going to discuss the business of this fellowship. If you are a member of this fellowship, if you were to see the right hand of fellowship, you're invited. If you want to become a member of the fellowship, no. But that's, that, uh, that'll be next, the last Sunday of this month. We'll have a meeting. Amen? Any questions about that? Anything else, Ms. Gibson? Okay, what's that? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the, uh, the baby dedication. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, we, we, we claim babies as our own. We've claimed you. And I'll wait for you to come and whisper in my ear so you're ready to join. Um, anyway, come on. I'm going to give you the final words on this. Kind of, kind of different, isn't it? Yeah, you are. Amen. God, we just bless you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have spoken on today. God, bless these, these people, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you will allow your face to shine upon them, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that their children will be blessed, their children's children. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your love will encompass them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let them walk out of here knowing that they are loved, God, by you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can you please greet someone, someone that uh, you didn't come into church with and just greet someone. Tell them hello.